Okay. Uh, good afternoon. We're sitting out here with uh, Elwood Woody Johnson, or otherwise known as Lady Elaine Peacock. And uh, we decided to sit down and talk to you today. It's a beautiful afternoon, and we're sitting out on your front porch of your house. And we decided to sit down and talk to you basically about your life and some of the experiences that you had. And I thought that that would be a, um, a very fun and intriguing interview. So we'll go ahead and get started. Why don't you go ahead and uh, start with your family. We've got some pictures up here. And this picture right here. This is the oldest picture. It's the <laughs> oldest picture of the group. And I'll uh, hold it there so we can get on the camera. You want to go ahead and this is my mother in the middle. My oldest sister, Pat, who sews a lot of our gowns. Right. And you know her. And Charlene, uh, who has two boys and the husband, they're military. Mm -hmm. um, me, looking like, I don't know, I must have been kissed that day. <laughs> but that's my sister, Vanessa, who was in Texas with my father at this point. Mm -hmm. And this is my, was my brother, who is now my sister. Oh, right. <laughs> that's Miss Misty. Oh, suppose you've never seen Misty. Uh, that's Misty Before. Boy. Yes, that's Misty Boy. Boy. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and, uh, you can, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, where you're from and how you grew up and how you found yourself with your way to Portland. And well, my mother moved here with my stepfather, and that was when I was about 11 years old. So I've been here 20 years now, mm -hmm. or 22 years moved here when I was 11. And we stopped off in California and stayed at my oldest sister's place until they came up and found a place. And I thought I'd never live in an apartment. But we ended up having to live in an apartment because of other car problems we had on the way down in this big old black Cadillac. <laughs> the Cadillac was fine except it had its you know, problems. And uh, we ended up spending a lot of money on that instead of being able to come here and get a house. Right. So there were three kids that came with my mother, mm -hmm. um, two of the girls and myself. And one of my sisters was pregnant, so we got an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment on Halsey, and it was called Halsey Square at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And the girls slept in one bedroom, my mother slept in one bedroom, and I slept in the living room. <laughs> uh -huh. And I went. And to now Misty wasn't here. No, Misty wasn't here yet. Okay. And uh, I went to Glen Haven Grade School, where with my country voice, I was very popular. Texas voice, I had bad, severe case of the draw. <laughs> and they used to give me a hard time about it. But uh, I did very well. I was always real popular. I was uh, vice president and president of that school. And from there, I went to Benson. Ah, well, just prior to, uh, that's when I, I met you, right? It was before Benson, I think, just before. Just before Benson. My freshman year of high school. We um, both went to Benson. Then we both went to Benson. So, yeah. uh, now, that was a, a, a real uh, turning point. Yeah. Benson was. We were, I, remember, um, I remember one of the first times that I had ever met you. And uh, you used to wear this locket around your neck. Do you remember that? <laughs> I wore a locket. Okay, different. you wore a locket. Okay, I'll remind you of it. Mm -hmm. you, wore a, um, you wore a locket around your neck. And uh, I never knew what it was for, but I asked you one day. And you opened it up, and you had a picture of this guy in there. And I asked oh, you, I said, I asked you, I asked you, because you were the first person that I ever met that told me that they were gay. I didn't even know what the hell that was. Well, I mean, I kind of knew um, what it was, I think. We were sure. on the youth commission together. Right. And we, so we'd see each other. Exactly. And, okay, the locket, and I, did, I had a keychain with a boyfriend on it. Right. And I think that's I what think it was, but I always wore necklaces, yeah, different well, you necklaces. Had, well, this thing, I think this thing was around your neck, and it opened up, and you had a picture of this guy in there. Huh. And he had a big afro. Probably. Ron. Ron. Right. And I asked you, I said, who is that? And you told me, you said, that is my boyfriend. And I said, you're what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, that's my boyfriend. That's right. And I was, I was 14 years old. I was shocked. I couldn't believe that you know that you had that you had a boyfriend. You know, so anyway, so you explained it to me how he came about being your boyfriend, and I asked you what y'all did. You yes. know, with, as, and you just got down right graphic and told me exactly what was going on, and yes. I was just wrecked. And I remember leaving that whole experience. Where I was because you were the first person that I ever met who was actually living these feelings or th that I was experiencing myself at that age. Mm -hmm. You know, because I had known that I was in interested in. And guys, that's why we're Benson to begin with. Right. Was always a school for the boys. <laughs> 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 Good 
Because I knew it was a school full of boys. Yeah. Well, you got to Benson, and uh, so why don't you talk about what that experience there? Because I didn't. Um, during our freshman year, there was this one jerk. It was a black guy. He, we were in registration line, and he said, Elwood Johnson is a faggot, just out of the blue. And this line was like a hundred and some boys long, and I was standing there going, <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? Uh -huh. You know, wh where did he get this idea just to scream this out? Mm -hmm. So from then on, during my freshman year, I've always had a little twist. And right. I've always heard yeah, a briefcase. Yeah, she sure did. I've always heard a briefcase, right. and I'm looking at it. That's stuff, right. You know, and those little belts, little dangling yeah. things. Yeah, well, no, I didn't hear dangling things, but I had a different necklace on every day. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I did, that was hard to get over, uh -huh. him calling me anything in public like that before I even had a chance to breathe at the school. Right. So that year I ran for freshman class president. Yes, I do recall that experience. And you did too. Yes. <laughs> that's right. That's how well, we really that got me really And exactly. uh, And I won. I was real popular. Like I said, even though they knew it was right. dirty almost, but basically, mm -hmm. I you know because I was very upfront about it. You know, people right. would ask me where we went out or did I go to the fag club. Right now we we. Um, just to back up, we, we both ran for class president. We both ran for class president. Right, and that was our freshman year in high mm -hmm. school. And uh, after that meeting that I took, and that election, I decided <laughs> there was not enough room in the school for two queens. And uh, I was, we played second field with you all the way through the whole four years. It was pretty evident. The one thing that, you know, one thing that really always impressed me was that I don't think that you ever made any attempt to, to uh, hot, and this is like 1975. Yeah. You didn't make any kind of attempt to uh, more or less, I guess, say hide the fact that you were gay. Right. I mean, you were, it was, it was pretty obvious to me, and I'm sure to a lot of people that were in school that, that you were gay. And well, that did, uh, I, I know, I remember one time a fight broke out in the hallway. Right. We talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come sashay by, and somebody right. goes, well, what, 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 the class president uh, uh, stopped the fight. This <laughs> we elected him for do something. <laughs> and somebody goes, who, Tinkerbell? <laughs> And I walked right through the private right through the classroom. <laughs> right, you walked through the Exactly. Now, um, so did you have any other kind of problems beyond just that one incident at registration? Well, no. After that, you know, during my freshman year, I tried to hide it sometimes, but uh, I figured, these people don't pay my bills. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about it. And when you were on the gymnastics team, you and, didn't do it. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 You were in a bush sport like football. Really? I, I, I thought about football, but uh, my mother asked me, was I crazy? <laughs> that I'd get crushed and I would have. Exactly. But uh, I thought I'd give it a try. I said, no, different. Okay, I'll go off to gymnastics. That's something. But you know, you can kill yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> In gymnastics, too. Exactly. Falling down on a pommel bar the wrong way, or right. which I've done it all. Right. I never did get my letter. Right. <laughs> oh, you, you never did? No. We have to write those people. No. <laughs> because I was more interested in getting the car. Okay. okay. So I like to work. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Um, now, uh, so then you went on, uh, so school started, so school started and you started a full year of freshman right. high school. And, I did. And, and now, what did you do um, socially after hours? We really didn't have any place to go or anything to do. No. We hung out in the street for the most part. At I mean. first. Right. And then Metropolis opened. Um, what year? Well, no, Mildred's Palace. Mildred's Palace. Palace. Do you remember how we happened to find that place? Through me, because I went first, and you guys were curious. <laughs> right. Like, what is this? That's when we were in the youth commission together. Right. Right. You we did, did all the leadership programs. That's right. We sure did. <laughs> oh. We were running the city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know we were faggots. We were running. <laughs> they just little the kids. Exactly. We ran them all. Principals advisory committee. Right. Students advisory committee. All of them. Right. But um. And we, I was on the school district advisory committee. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Title seven. Is, right. The Portland Public School District. Mm -hmm. Citizens advisory committee to the school board. Right. Mm -hmm. I was on that. So we both kind of, you know, we, we got off that stuff. Because we didn't have shit to do. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We would have, if we could have gotten grades for that, we would have been full. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all the time that we spent doing other stuff. Yeah. With yeah. Beaver Boy State. Right. We both did. We both yeah. with American Legion Beaver Boy mm -hmm. State. So exactly. we've done it all. Right. Quite a bit. You know, a lot of leadership stuff. Now, we didn't uh, have any place to go, and uh, where did you, uh... Yeah, you... Okay. Um, well, we didn't have any place to go, um, no places to, to go and be with. We went to, uh, I remember we used to go to... Oh, you and I used to go to Earthquake Ethel's. Do you remember? Yeah. In the afternoon, when, yeah. they, made, when they had the... Uh, 
And remember the Hobbit, or I don't know if that's what they. The call Hobbit. Well, I, over on Thirty Third. The Lesbian Club. Right. We went. We got. We got to go there in the afternoon. We got to go there because they liked us. Right. Sometimes after hours. <laughs> after a certain concert. They like to see us dance. Yeah, exactly. And then we also got to go to uh, Close Encounters. Mm -hmm. um, that was a, 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 small, a small club that they had that they opened up to uh, um, kids what, in the year? afternoon, right? And and then we found uh, we were in the youth council before all that. We found uh, Mildred's Palace. Mildred's Palace. Yes. Okay. Do you and I had that? gone one time, and I told you guys about yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. And wrong. I couldn't believe it. And I said, "There's <laughs> a gay club. Uh, just all gay people. You have to come." Uh, how you how came right. and left. And I didn't know you were there because you were afraid. I saw you. I think you were terrified. <laughs> I remember. I thought, oh my goodness, he's going to know. No, I remember. I remember. I walked in there. And then, do you remember the first time we went in there together? Yeah. What happened? The first thing happened when we walked into the front door. And we saw this guy sitting behind the counter hanging off this man. Do you remember who that was? Mm. No, I'm not remembering. Oh, I'll remind you. We walked into the club, we walked in downstairs, and uh, they had a staircase that kind of wound right. up to the other floor, and down at the bottom of this cash register, and he charged 50 cents to get in. I think it was, <laughs> and we went, I remember with a dollar, it was whatever it was, it was incredibly cheap, and we walked in, and we walked in together, he goes, are you guys gay? And I, do you remember what he made us do? Kiss. Yes, it was, <laughs> he made us kiss, didn't he, to prove that we were yes. gay. You kissed him then. <laughs> I had never kissed a man before in my life, for God's sake. I was only like 15 years old, I think, or 14, something like that. And I had never kissed a guy before in my life, and he made it smooch. We got 15. So, yeah, because they didn't want any uh, female dancing and uh, right. mixed dancing. I was in there one night and saw a woman with her. In fact, I was in there one night, and a woman was dancing with her shirt off. Boobs flopping all over the place. Uh, oh! So I ran downstairs. Yeah, I mean, let's see right, and I ran downstairs and I, I told uh, I told Manny that there's some woman upstairs dancing. He goes, "Well, who cares?" <laughs> well, isn't it going to be? You know, she's probably a lesbian. He felt like, "Oh well, whatever." She wants to take her shirt off. Let her take her shirt off. <laughs> you know, so, but anyway, so we had found a place then. Where? I did. With, that's where I met Mark at. No, I never hung out there. I went, Misty showed me one time mm -hmm. when I got in trouble that night because I went home with this guy. She told, asked to give me a ride, a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he and I ended up lovers. Oh, really? Reggie Neal. Oh, remember yes, Reggie I remember Neal? him. He was married and had kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> I remember you telling and, me that. I remember that little And thing, he but. just loved me, but right. I was like, uh... That lasted for a little while, you know, because he'd buy me anything, and I was like, but... I don't want you to buy me anything. Exactly. <laughs> I just, you know, I have other things in mind. And then, of course, I met Ron. I met several people, actually, you know. We were really I young. I, we were really young. I remember uh, also when we used to, I used to, I would, I had met Wendell mm -hmm. on a bus. Wow. Wow, boy, I tell you, just about, and we were probably about uh, 14 or 15 years old. And I met him on a bus, and he took me downtown, because I had never been in downtown Portland in my life. Mm -hmm. And he took me downtown uh, on to uh, what they called this area they called Camp, which was basically um, um, between uh, Southwest uh, 3rd and 4th, between mm, Taylor and Taylor Salmon and or something Salmon, like that. Taylor there were a few bookstores in there. Like that. Right. And there were a few bookstores in there. And he, you know, the only way that, you know, they could really meet, you know, because we never slept with each other. That was yeah. unheard of, y'all, get real. <laughs> yeah. Please, Lord, men. He took me down to this place, and it was called the Water Closet. I think it was uh, the Water Closet, and it was, uh, I think it's called Eli's now, or it's where Eli's is mm -hmm. or something like that in downtown Portland. And we stood outside one night, and I had to be home like about 10 or 11. And we, Wendell said, we stand outside here, we can meet some men, and they'll take us home. <laughs> we didn't meet anybody. They, they probably thought we were lost children or something. I don't know, but we didn't meet anybody down there. And then I met other people, you know, who, who actually said that they were like, you know, they would like sell themselves. Yeah. They were like, you know, but they weren't really selling themselves. They sold themselves because, uh, not because they had to sell themselves to survive, but mostly were doing it because that was the way to have sex with a man. Yeah. Which, you know, it was unheard of us trying to do each other. That was just not working. Mm -hmm. And then we used to hang out at a place called The Wall. Do you remember that? Down by Pioneer Courthouse? By Pioneer Courthouse. And it's before the mall, the transit mall was down there. And all the, mm -hmm. the homeless kids would be down there, or the kids didn't have any place to stay or whatever. And the gay kids, or anybody who was basically outside uh -huh. of the, uh, the mainstream, so to speak. I didn't get much of a chance to do any of that. Oh, really? Well, I did have a lot of time to do all that. But you would, that's what you were doing when I was at that. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So then uh, we, we got to go to, the, to Mildred's Palace. Mildred's Palace, and we continued to go to Mildred's Palace. Right. 
and doing the contests and the shows and the research that we didn't really start shows. No, not really did, but we saw them though. Yeah. What, how did that? Uh, what, what kind of? Uh, how did that change? What did you think that did for you? That's you know having a place like that. I mean, what, did, did that have a dramatic change in your life? Remember? Yes, because it was the only place we could go for one. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of people, and I like people. Mm -hmm. You know, we all like to be around a lot of people, other than being at school. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. We and used to just party like what about, crazy. What about the two o'clock in the morning crowd? Oh, all the places just. Oh, I, just, I remember standing up on the balcony uh -huh. and looking down on the dance floor, and there'd be. Look like 500 men out there, all their clothes off. Right? That's what it looked like, anyway. That's what it looked like. <laughs> that's, that's right. And having, having a good time. Party, yeah. And having a good time. Exactly. You used to look forward to those bars closing yeah. down over there. Because the older guys would come up. Mm -hmm. And I, I met Ron, who was older. And then I found out later on, he was younger. He was closer to our age than he thought. Oh, really? With Afro. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I thought he'd go down, what, a block, two blocks, a block and a half to the embers uh -huh. and party. Mm -hmm. And I'd hear all these stories like, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. I, over time, had several boyfriends. I was never single. Right. You remember, you but you were always married. Right? I know you had to you still <laughs> and there I was, just trapped so long, <laughs> all alone. Well, you were going to get married to that girl you took to the prom. Do you remember that? Do you we remember talked about that. <laughs> we got, well, yeah, we talked about that. Um, the, uh, uh, the next thing was uh, we got to like our senior years in high school. Right. And um, by then, Mildred's Palace had closed, mm -hmm. and then it moved over to Third and Burnside and became the city. The Metropolis. Metropolis. The Metropolis. The Metropolis. And that was a whole different experience oh, there, yes. too. <laughs> and, uh, do you remember uh, the uh, uh, high school, the, the uh, high school prom that we went to together? And I, <laughs> we, we, uh, I took. Uh, high school was Marshall. I was my, it was Marshall High School that we went yeah. to together, right? Yeah. And we took, and you know, Rita Miller. Rita right? Miller, who was in love with me. Exactly. And uh, this girl named um, Jesus, uh, Brianna. I remember? I, I think her name was. Uh, Brianna. You were kissing her. I, I know. I, you know, I think that that was my, um, that was that, uh, that tremendous amount of guilt that I felt. <laughs> of, of why the fact that I couldn't be a heterosexual, because I've never slept with a woman. Have you? No. See, you, they're not very I many. I messed around, but not, you know, like. I have never, uh, well, I've touched. Uh, you have? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even sniffed. <laughs> but, but um. You, uh, I've never had, had so I, I felt this tremendous, I mean, I felt this, we were at the prom, and, you know, this is their high school prom, we took them to, mm -hmm. and I, I it's just, I just, it's Remember, overwhelming I, guilt. I uh, told Rita if she wanted me to go to her prom that she had to rent a tuxedo. That's right, she did. And she did. <laughs> and then, then we uh, took pictures, and I curtsied, and she curtsied a little lower, but both of us curtsied. Right. Uh, exactly. In her prom picture, that's she right. she had to tell a lies about me. That's right. Seemed like that was this rich. <laughs> Person. Right, she was building you up and to be some, some soap yeah. opera character. That's what she was doing. Exactly. <laughs> and we went to the, and after we, we took them to their prom, then where did we take them? We went to the city nightclub. <laughs> the <Metropolis. laughs> After we left, we left, in fact, we cut out the prom early. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, we, and, we took them to, and we took them down there. I remember mm -hmm. taking them down there. I remember uh, Brianna being completely was, besides herself. I know. Like, what These men dancing thing? together inside this place. She was just like, whatever, you know. And yeah. I always, she knew that I was, um, I, well, I had told her that I was, you know, that I like guys. I don't know if I use the word gay or not, but, you know, yeah. she, but so I, maybe she was on this trip about how she could convert me. They were both on conversion exactly. trips, you remember? Right. I sat in the back seat of your Nova. That's right. We were and you were in the front seat, and y'all were kissing, and I was laughing in the back seat. Because <laughs> Maria, <laughs> because Rita was trying to, she said, I can change you, and she's this girl that's about 200 and, well, she was a big girl. She was a pretty hefty woman. And she said, I can change you. She even went as far as to unzip my pants. Remember? And I started laughing. <laughs> I started laughing, you know, so it's not going to work for you. Might as well give it up. Exactly. That's the closest to a special experience I've had in my entire life. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. And Rita ended up, yeah, she ended up being a trip later on for another friend of ours, Kirk, remember? That's right. The baby. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, <laughs> um, then we went after the prom, uh, we, we took them down to the two. They, they found that to be quite interesting. We were out there. Rita all was all right. Yeah, in fact, we took them home and dropped them off, and we went back. And we went back. We that's went back right. <laughs> That's right, we went back out in our tuxedo. Yeah. That's right, we danced the night away. Yes. Okay, <laughs> right on. So after uh, all this, then we were student body president, 
at our own high school. At our own high school. Both yeah. of us were. We went to Madison. Mm -hmm. And had a, I was pretty good. Couldn't handle the boys at the instance. I couldn't handle, well, it wasn't so much the boys, it was I was going to be sitting out there playing second fiddle to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I could see that the freshman year that that was going to be a conflict. So I became real popular. I worked yeah. in the main office, and they thought I was a teacher's pet, but you know, I really wasn't a teacher's pet. It was just that I treated them with respect like a lot of students didn't. You know, and at Christmas time one year, you know, I was selling candy canes, you know how Santa right. to do all these right. like, fundraising things. And I bought a whole bunch of candy canes and I bought some personalized Christmas cards that said not a creature was stirring except for Woody. Uh -huh. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I put it in all 98, I think it was 98 boxes. Exactly. <laughs> we would have to have an ice cream truck full of bottles and shit. It's a good time to stop. Uh, though the Metropolis had a really, you know, a profound uh, uh, impact on both of our lives. That's when we... Uh, do you remember uh, the first night? That's when we first uh, started doing drag. Yes. We can start with that. We can start. <laughs> yes, we moved we that. We did drag, and it was I think it was a Halloween. October thirty first, nineteen seventy nine. And you borrowed a dress from my mother. Yeah. And I wore a dress of my sisters. Yeah. And Misty, <laughs> Misty put you in face because you were closer to her skin tone, and my <laughs> sister put me in face because I was closer to her skin tone. You were down in your mother's basement. Yes. <laughs> Boy, whoever would have thought? <laughs> it, it always stands to make sense that both of us we were really active people yes. in in high school, and, and then we just went on to be active, right? In the club, we right. uh, we had a con there was a contest about a year after we graduated, and it was rosebud and thorn. And we had seen that at the old uh, Mildred's Palace. Mildred's Palace. We seen it ever yeah. right? Because this would have been that was the fourth year, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Wanda was the third. Right. Rosebud. And she was the last one to be elected in Mildred's Palace. Yeah. Right. And, and then uh, we went to the city, every metropolis. Mm -hmm. And I became Rosebud against, I ran against Sue Tissue. Remember how upset she was she didn't win? Yeah. It was a real girl. I, I do. <laughs> Her <I> unisex. <laughs> right. See, we, we, you know, most of the people that had won Rosebud up until that time, uh, they weren't as, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, affiliated with the the larger court system, right? Like we had been, As we had been, right? We knew the rules, and we knew that's right. So when you, you know, became Rosebud, right, taught us a lot, right? right. And we've seen a lot, and, I used and to we her. right, we danced in a couple of coronations before. Mm -hmm. We were before I have pictures of that, right? We do, yeah. and um, we danced in a couple of uh, coronation entrances and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so we and we were underage, but we got some good exposure before we ever got there. <laughs> right. But now there was something that happened in the middle of your year, uh, as well as the, here we got bees attacking us for our lemonade, <laughs> the whole thing. Get away from here. I think he's going to be coming back. Because <laughs> 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 <That's, laughs> uh, you imagine get stung by a bee? Die from a bee sting, of all things. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, anyway, so we had what? So there, there we had a little incident take place during the middle of uh, your year. And I know most people probably uh, uh, don't maybe, maybe know, and some people probably don't give a damn. You're one of those kind of people that nobody ever has anything bad to say about. I said, I said, you don't know any anything dirty to say about Peacock. I said, well, sit and talk to me. <laughs> but um, uh, there was uh, you got somebody somebody talked you into something, right? Um, why don't you want to talk about that? Oh, not much, but it was a bank conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, How about I that? Mean, you know, you had some grand plans. It cost yeah. a lot of money to do it. <laughs> yeah. thought it was, I, I felt like it was just a game, because you know, it was so. It would have been so easy. It was so easy to do. Right. And peacock dress. The peacock did this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have anything to do with that? <laughs> so one day we had planned. Um, there was two other friends. One went to Benson, who was gay. And his boyfriend, who worked at uh, First Interstate Bank of Burnside, mm -hmm. and a girl that worked there. Mm -hmm. And we had planned on getting some money out of the bank because they knew uh, that. That was back up. The, the money was not your money. You weren't going no. to make a withdrawal from your account. We weren't going to make a withdrawal. <laughs> we were just going to get the money out of the bank. <laughs> right. And it, it, they, they said, talked me into <laughs> dressing up and playing the part that would go in and get the money. Now you were about what, 18, 17 when this happened? 17. When think. this happened. Mm -hmm. All right, you were working uh, part time at Sears, which was over off of Grand Avenue. It was no longer there, it's now the Metro. I had a good office. job. <laughs> you were doing a good job, you were making good money. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing it 
you know, partially for fun because I could get away with it. Right. I thought, it was a challenge. Except that mm -hmm. it was a challenge, you know, and I like challenges. And uh, we went in the bank. We had planned for it to be a busy day, mm -hmm. but it was not. In fact, a busy day at the bank. Right. You're still pissed so, about that, I can tell. I had. Dressed, uh, <laughs> I had it looked like you was expecting a lot more money. I had dressed up and Misty had this wig. It was like a Dolly Parton, but in black. You know, <laughs> perfect curls and all this stuff. And I had put this little business leisure suit on. Uh -huh. I still have that suit. They didn't confiscate for evidence. Well, they did. They did. They didn't give me my mother's gloves back. Oh, then. how terrible! I had my mother's gloves on with her black leather gloves. Oh no! And before we left the house, Misty had purchased for me at Christmas time this little play typewriter. Oh yeah. And we typed this letter. Ron typed the letter mm -hmm. that went that I went to high school with. Right. With my roommate at the time. Yeah. That. With his typewriter, that the letters were like. It was so unprofessional, <laughs> but but at the same time, you know, this is what you see on TV. So the letters were up and down, and it said, "Go to the vault," because they had been robbed before. So it was an inside job, and he knew where the money would be. You know, mm -hmm. the girl and the guy inside the bank, yeah. Ron's boyfriend, uh, and, uh, and the girl. What was his name? Who? Oh, the other uh, 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 Jay. Jay. Mm -hmm. Jay. Right. And Jay was white. Ron was black. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happened? <laughs> we went. I, I, I went to the bank. First, I had to get a car, a getaway car. Right. Because my Pujo wasn't working at the time. Do right. you remember? That's right. She broke down. She broke down. So I had to go to uh, um, that place, Chrysler, right. on Broadway. Exactly. And try to get a car with $200 in my savings account. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. So I was talking to that salesperson, and the salesperson kept going back at System House, going back to talk to his boss, and his boss finally came out and said, to me and the friend that I was with who did not know what was going on, Kirk. Kirk Bell. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what was going on. He said, he came in the room and he said, do you think that I'm a goddamn Santa Claus? And I just started laughing. You know how Kirk laughed at right, me. Exactly. at anything. Uh -huh. And I said, no, 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 no. My father's coming to sell <laughs> with the rest of the money. <laughs> and, uh, and it'll be paid for. So finally he agreed to say, OK, I'll believe you. I have an honest face. Uh -huh. And I signed my life away, and I figured when I got to that bank door that I had either better go get this money or do whatever, because it didn't matter what way I went. Right. I was going to jail if I was going to marry you. Exactly. So, so you were in. There, so I was in. Point. I went, and I was told that the, the manager of the branch was gay. It's a big black man, oh. or bisexual. Uh -huh. So he noticed me right away, and he did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess he looked so. up. <laughs> and started smiling. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> okay, so Jay was the head teller at the branch, so it made sense for me to wait in line mm -hmm. if I wanted to see, you know, if I had a large transaction, because mm -hmm. that's what they do. Mm -hmm. But this lady had finished a split second before he did, and I just motioned to her that I was going to wait for him, and then he finished. And I went over to him, and I opened my little, this fold-up purse, mm -hmm. and I opened it, and he pulled the note out, and was all nervous and everything, you know. And it said, go to the vault. So he went to the vault to get the money. But the lady that was involved in it was n nowhere to be found. She was supposed to be looking out for this old biddy that was always had her nose in people's business. Mm -hmm. And she was going to keep her busy while we were doing what we were doing. <laughs> and then, so I got, he came back, I got some money. Oh, I forgot. The first thing that happened when I got the car is the battery went dead. <laughs> <laughs> so to things to, weren't going right from right. the beginning. I had to go to Sears. <laughs> yeah. I had to go to Sears where I worked. Oh, to get the <laughs> battery. <laughs> I forgot about that. But after we got the battery, <laughs> and I told my sister, you know, I we were going to a friend's work for full of friends, so she had to put me in makeup. Right. Because I, I didn't do it. Because you, you were very good. Right. Right. The, for, yeah, I couldn't get the lashes on. That's right. You had a hell of a time with those lashes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, and, be, uh, we'd be two hours late somewhere, and you still trying to get your <laughs> <laughs> Let me yes. go. Where the hell I got So <laughs> I went through that episode with them, and I, I I went I came through the front door of the bank, and I went out the back door, and the camera wasn't on, so they never got a picture or anything. But this lady who was at the drive-up window later on had said to the police, apparently, "I have never seen a woman run so fast in my life." <laughs> You know, like and it was funny because I had Ron park the car and raise the hood behind some uh, some shrubbery like this, maybe. You know, uh -huh. 
and the tall stuff. And all they knew is that it was a burgundy and silver car. They never did figure out what right. it was. And we had routed ourselves in the opposite direction, back to the freeway in 82nd, because I lived over here. Right. And went around, because I had to work that day. So I remember. I home. So you went out and pulled a job early in the morning. <laughs> and that, that later on the evening, I you were at Elwood Johnson and yeah. Sears. Yeah, uh, Sears and Sears. No sideburns. No sideburns. No <laughs> <laughs> car. Not that I had no sideburns, but... Brilliant idea. <laughs> anyway, three months, I think it was three months, mm -hmm. that it took them to catch up with uh, us. But you know, and it's interesting, because I remember um, uh, Ron and I were roommates. Mm -hmm. And apparently you guys had planned this whole thing in my apartment. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. I didn't do anything about it. I was working at uh, Benjamin Franklin Savings and Loan, which is now Bank of America. Okay. I was I was a I was only 18 years old. I had just gotten appointed to this presidential commission, <laughs> so I decided to use some of that stock, and I I got myself uh, uh, a job as the uh, head teller in this branch at 18 years old yeah. of, of Benjamin Franklin. And uh, Jay and Ron were were lovers. And uh, one of the first places the FBI always looks when there's a bank robbery is the teller. Mm -hmm. that, because they always suspect right. the teller of being an inside job. And so they watch the teller. Well, Jay went out the, the very next day, a, a brand new Cadillac. White boy in the <laughs> Cadillac, which at that time in Portland. And he was 18, all, all of the people he saw was old. black men in Cadillac right. going down Union Avenue. Right, which was stupid. Yeah. But anyway, I didn't know any of this was going on. And I do remember now, you know, I remember it later, um, you know, when I was leaving my apartment, I would, for, for weeks, I would see these guys sitting up the street mm -hmm. in a car. And one day, they, a couple of times, they followed me all the way to work. And I remember going inside and telling you know, the manager, I said, these guys out here had just followed me all the way from 52nd and Clinton over here to Mar Union Avenue and Ainsworth. And I have no idea what they're following me for. Well, that was the FBI. Mm -hmm. And all they knew is, or all they suspected is that somebody did this job dressed as a woman. Well, we both had started doing drag, so they had observed, they had thought it was me all along. <laughs> Apparently, that's what the FBI agent told me, but, but I was by far too heavy. The person was much, <laughs> much more skinnier. They, had, they couldn't figure out, you know, and I remember after, because they, they interviewed me, mm -hmm. you know, and I was, and I had to go down to the FBI headquarters or whatever the heck, and they, um, uh, you know, they couldn't figure out how I could lose, gain so much weight in such a short period of time. He will. Exactly. So, and I didn't know any of this that went on. In fact, I was, when the FBI um, actually moved in and arrested all of you guys at the same time. They at the same came. time they did. They came uh, to the Ron point. called me and, or I called, I think Ron called me and I said, yes, I know they're here too. That's the way they operate, you know, and I put exactly. my blazer on and I put a oh, very nice, by the way. fingernail file yes. in my pocket. <laughs> and when I got down there, I pulled my fingernail file on that file of my nails and the, the officer said, you, you don't look too upset by all this. I said, well, the way my friend was spending his money, the one that works at the bank. <laughs> Wait, make this real I said, <laughs> I thought happen. something should happen. <laughs> so, so I was expecting you all. <laughs> that, that, that's always that was quite an experience. Exactly. I, that was one of the things, you know, that was one of the things that I think I, I remember now that I think about because this happened quite a while. Yeah. How long ago? It happened about 15 right years after, ago. Yeah. And um, one of the things I always remember is I was so upset. I was a mess. You'd have thought that I'd shot somebody myself and they're there to get me. And I couldn't figure out how come, you know, you always had this ability to just stay so cool and so calm and um, uh, throughout all of this. And I had uh, never had uh, any idea how you were able to do I was that. I so upset. I could never figure out why. You were so calm so cool and so collective through this entire thing. I mean, I was just, I, I don't know, the whole thing. And then, then came time, they had a, the, the trial. The, and I mean, the trial was coming around. And Ron was in there crying. Oh, just bellowing he's like. He's a big guy, you yeah, know, Ron. Yeah, he was, he was, he was, right. he he was he should be a quarterback of the football team. Yeah, you exactly. would think he would be the one, you know, to support all of us. <laughs> right, exactly. And I said, Ron, what are you crying about? There's going to be 200 and some men there. <laughs> yeah, because he said so. <laughs> You're looking forward to the federal prison camp. My, oh, man. The probation officer told me to take a tennis racket. However, I didn't know how to play, play tennis. Uh -huh. But he said it's going to be like a vacation because what it is is minimum security being teenagers and you're out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, uh -huh. uh, born in California. Right. 
and you can't go anywhere anyway. I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's right. You're in the middle of the desert, right. so it's just a discipline thing. But you made good use of your time while you were there, because you and I, and we talk mm -hmm. every day, almost every other day on the phone. Yeah. And we got, we wrote each other, so we kept, kept in communication. Yeah. And the whole time, now that was right after you got elected Rosebud. Right. And so, so it was right so in the middle. They were, they were calling Rosebud, she's a caged bird. Yeah. <laughs> she's a caged bird. And so remember I, the I ashes was fell, Mount St. Helens That's blue. right, Mount St. Helens Blue. While we were having my farewell show at the... Uh, that's <laughs> right, that's exactly right. Mount St. Helens, that's right. We were, <laughs> that's right. Mount St. Helens erupted, yes, the night that we were sending Peacock off. Of here. That's right. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a night for that. They always remember it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What a historical event. What a, yeah. <laughs> But uh, I think that was my naughtiest moment in life. Yeah, it was. But I, I, I like experiences. You know? Yeah. Well, you, uh, well, while you were in, uh, while you were in, uh, what was this place that? Was it down in the California? And um, it was close to Nevada. Well, I was born in California. Born in California. California. Now, you were in this federal prison camp, and well, you made good use of your time, because I remember that you were able to, you did a show for this. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> did a pseudo show oh, for crying out in the hallway. <laughs> what had happened is the security guard, you know, they lived off. It was. It used to be a military right. uh, like, barracks uh -huh. and things, you know. And so the officers had their homes built out there. Mm -hmm. They had their homes built out there, too. And some of the boys went over to clean one of the homes up. And they bought back a pair of pumps mm -hmm. and a, a parasol. Uh -huh. It was real pretty, so I wanted to bring it home. But... <laughs> Well, what did you, I was wondering if you did one of the uniforms. Right. Here, Levi. No, I had some, uh, they brought, oh, they brought a pair of football girls for a little kid. <laughs> you know, pads in them. And they look like hot pants up in the yard. <laughs> so what I did was I put the little hot pants on, or what looked like hot pants, and I had a shirt and I tied it up, and I put oranges in some socks and put them around my neck. <laughs> And I had somebody go to the pool hall and get some. They had different colors chalk for the pool. Oh. She was some red. And I was doing the makeup with the red. And I wrapped this gold towel around my head. And put a, there was a, a pendant that I stuck right. You know how Jaja yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuck right at the top of there. And I did this little showette in the hallway for him. It was quite funny. But I was the entertainer. <laughs> and then Ron and I, Ron ended up at the second. Well, Ron got there first, and we were supposed to all be at different places. There were four, well, three, essentially, of us, male. Yeah. And I ended up at the same place that Ron was because I asked for permission to finish my first term in college. Because I had just started college. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it would only be a month, so I'd be going, leaving town a month after the other people did. Right. So I ended up at the same prison. Secure, minimum security as Ron did. And, they don't and I got that. there. No, they don't. <laughs> I got there, and the security guard says, well, Ms. Johnson, Ms. <laughs> Reynolds has been waiting your arrival. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I said, you don't call me Ms. You don't know me. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh -huh. Call me 784-39. <laughs> you call me anything. Yeah, he went and got Ron, and Ron came in, and Ron was very happy. Ron hadn't left his dorm room much. All right. For a month. Right, you got Then it. he introduced me to some of the people around there. I was I was pretty bold. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We were the closest thing to women in there. Right. <laughs> so you missed about, uh, what, you had six months? No, four months. Four months, and uh, which was a pretty, pretty short time for bank robbery in those days. Oh, okay. those days. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> what you think We were about, teenagers, you were but a I didn't have a gun or And anything. the other thing that's true, and, and plus you had a lot of people that, that uh, came to your, to, to your support. I right. Mean, School teachers, mm -hmm. principals. Wrote letters of testimony and mm -hmm. were willing to come and sit I down there. and have those. Exactly. And, yeah. Because I've never, you know, they, they knew that if I had done something like that, they I would have to be persuaded by exactly. my peers, and, which is exactly what happened. Right. But, because uh, I would never think of going to <laughs> <laughs> the bank. I was, uh, I, was a, uh, as long I, as I knew it would be easy and Poo, poo, almost. Right. Well, with the inside. When I remember the FBI agent when they told me that they had a recipe for that, I said, "What? No, not Woody." <laughs> I, I couldn't. Just the whole shock of that whole thing. So you locked about six months of the year in Rosebud, and then uh, you came back. I came back. And we had a big finish. Yeah. For Rosebud. Oh, big finish. Yeah. Well, because Lanny had not been used to real drag queens up until the point he met us. <laughs> and we came in there we with these. Court. We had these grand plans. Yes. We had. We wanted tickets printed up. 
and we had yeah. programs made like uh, what? We would just let people throw wigs on and jump we on stage them, before. We gave them tickets, the older people That's that right. knew wouldn't come and pay. <laughs> right. We got them invited to <laughs> that room's full. That's right. We packed that place, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a it was a, it was a nice finish. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, uh, a lot of other things start to change. Right. Once you want to talk about uh, what what went on uh, shortly after all that. After that, we were you knew when we were becoming twenty one. Exactly. Because <laughs> you know, sex was, boy, I tell you, you had no problem getting whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted it back then. No. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, problem. you just have to be, you'd have to have no legs, no arms, and no face to get it, <laughs> to miss, miss the train. Because really? Was, you know, this was before um, this whole thing with uh, AIDS yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. Um, in fact, about 1982, um, we had, uh, both of us had just been 21, barely. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Chester, Brinker, uh, Esther Hoffman Howard, we both started getting involved in the court. Campaign. Um, I had uh, uh, ran for Miss Oregon. Well, while you were uh, playing Peacock Rosebud, I had my fake OLCC card. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> I was the princess down yes. at Dollar Penny's doing numbers in the back room. And I was like about 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had both got fake ID after that. And after we that we did. That's yeah. right. We both got OLCC cards. But I still went through the back. That's right. We both still came to the back. <laughs> no, I was going to the front. We were going to the front. So, right. And so I figured this is kind of fun. And so we started getting really involved. And they caught me on the night of my 21st Good birthday. birthday. Because <laughs> <laughs> our birthday is like you went through the park. front door. Right. Right. And I went to going across around the back and we <laughs> got the tail end of my coat. And I'm up at the town booth giving <laughs> Danny. Danny my tape, uh -huh. who is back in town. Right. And uh, they were tapping me on the shoulder. And I looked back and I went, oh shit. But I was 21, I mean, but I had been going there for a while. Well, it was about a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I was, it would have been an embarrassing moment. But Danny said, oh, he's all right. She's all right, rather. Let, you know, and they didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was like, thank God. And then I, we started getting really involved in the, the court. In the court. Right, and I ran for Miss Oregon. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, uh, uh, Chester oh, hold on, starting to the clear the commands. Hi there. Well, you know, I'm getting tired of sitting on this side. And since the, uh, do you want to trade seats? Doesn't that sound like a fun thing to do? <laughs> Musical chairs. Da, 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 da. Oh, that big old chair she got right in front of the camera. Lord. Uh, ah, there we are. That looks much better now. We can uh, go ahead and continue. The uh, so then I, I got we got involved with this court thing. Right. And uh, that was an overwhelming experience to say the least. We were, uh, I uh, ran for Miss Oregon and we met, uh, I met all these people in the court mm -hmm. and we started getting involved and did a whole year in that. And about 1983, I think it was, um, uh, Chester Breaker, we mm -hmm. were talking, Esther Hoffman Howard. We worked on his campaign. We worked on his campaign. Um, uh, um, Empress 24. Right. And uh, shortly after that, he started, I remember um, being in the back room of Doll and Penny, but I remember some guy, do you remember this guy? He was a, a thin gentleman, and he came in Dollar Pennies, and he started talking about something that these guys were coming down with in, like, New York and Los Angeles, and in San Francisco, this disease that these people were coming down with. And I vaguely remember um, him, uh, you know, telling us that uh, he wasn't sure. In fact, he came into a couple of the Saturday night shows, and uh, he was the first person uh, in the state to uh, actually have come down with this. And he didn't, at the time, I don't think they had, AIDS wasn't the name of this, whatever it was. Right. Um, but he described how people had been getting sick and they were, they were coming down dying, and they, that they weren't sure about uh, what it was that caused it, and, but they just know that it was primarily gay men that were coming down with this. Right. Thing. And uh, then shortly after that, um, Chester got sick. Right. And uh, I, you know, I was, Chester and I were really, I, we were really close. I really, you know. Um, so were we, and yeah. I spent a right. Misty and me we right. were like close, and so it just went on. And we spent a lot of time over there, and he was, uh, uh, you know, one of the most uh, positive people that I'd ever met in my life. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, remember sitting there and uh, going through, uh, you know, that whole experience with him, and it happened fairly quickly. Right. We did a town hall program where they were talking about um, Social Security, mm -hmm. which is much better now the way they handle it. But uh -huh. um, 
this lady would stand up and say from the state that, well, sir, I'm sorry, you just have to wait. And Chester Barely, who could barely stand up at the time, right. stood up and said, lady, I would love to wait. Exactly. That was one of the most compassionate moments. Exactly. You know, from uh -huh. the whole history of this. And uh, so from there, lots of things started. Um, the Brinker Fund, right. which Ray was involved in. Right. Ray and Dora Jo actually mm -hmm. started it. And on uh, his deathbed, you know, was getting it together right. to become the Brinker Fund. Then we started Esther's Pantry. Right. It's a food bank. And that was all in response to the fact that at the early stages of all this, right. Uh, the, we well, still Ronald Reagan know. was president. Right. So we know what the problem was. Right. <laughs> Cut school funding and everything else. Yeah, right. Um, and so this whole thing, it was, uh, for us, though, it didn't like, at the time, um, I don't think it really, none of that really sunk in. You know, I remember, no, now that I think about it, because this happened like 10 years ago when Chester died. Now, mm -hmm. it's been 10 years. Can you believe that? Yeah. I mean, and... It doesn't uh, seem like it. No, it doesn't. But, it, you know, and I, it, none of that, I don't remember, none of this had a profound effect on me at the time. Maybe because I really felt like uh, most of the, the people, as time started to pass on, the majority of the people that started to uh, uh, come down or start to get sick, Mm -hmm. And before they call this AIDS, when they finally called it AIDS, I think, I don't know, maybe like 83 or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, most of the people, I felt like uh, they were outside of the group of people that I would have had right. any kind of contact with, period. We they weren't were bathhouse queens. Older. We weren't bathhouse queens. queens. We weren't bush queens. We weren't we around queens. Right. We, you know, just did our thing. We danced most of the time, right, and that exactly. was about it. Right. And, you know, we had a boyfriend here and there. But we, we had fun, but we didn't, like, uh, engage in massive orgies or right. things that we had heard about, right. uh, you know, the older set doing. Right. Exactly. And we, the two of us just weren't that type of people, right. so it didn't matter. Uh, I'm sure some people were doing things that we didn't know about that was our, that were our age. Right. <laughs> I, so did you, did you, uh, I, I'm just remembering again about that period and that, that, that particular moment at that time. Did you, uh, did, did you give any of this business a second thought? I mean, when you started first hearing about AIDS and a HIV and all that, did you even give any of this a second thought? No. I mean, I, I, I didn't either. I, I don't recall ever giving it a second thought. And maybe because I just didn't think that I was at risk. Right. Right. And, now and I, lots of people were that way. Right? Okay. And that's why there are so many, I think, mm -hmm. that are Because we did not know, we did not know at the time that whatever this was, they were transmitting it sexually. Right. No, I mean, no one, did, nobody bothered. They didn't know even at the time when we first heard about this, yeah. that the whole thing was being transmitted sexually. Did, uh, I do remember when uh, going to Good Samaritan Hospital just before Chester died, and spent a lot of time up in that hospital, mm -hmm. trying to figure out why my friend was dying, because I didn't know anything was going on. But I remember, you know, he told me that, um, that they had uh, developed a test where they could count uh, you know, they can find, uh, detect whatever this was that he was dying from in your blood. Mm -hmm. And he said that, he said that he would suggest, he said, you know, if you can, it was better to know than to not know. Right. You know, because you just never know. If you, you know, and it's, uh, But a lot of people were afraid to go and get tested. Right. I wasn't. Because at one time, you know, there are people who even worked for the state and things were getting leaked out. Exactly. People's names. Right. And some of these people are important people are in positions. Right where that would just ruin their career. Most of it, because it was like all gay, it was like, everybody thought it was a gay thing. Right, and whether you were gay or not, if you came down with this, That's you right. know, your career was gone. Because had leprosy. Right, and I was told, I've been in the hospital several times in the last year and a half, and I was told uh, in the beginning of this, at the, the U of O, they used to wear masks and gowns and gloves and come into the room, you know, which is more intimidating to a patient than mm -hmm. anything else, mm -hmm. which now we know today is totally unnecessary. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Chester, and then, uh, so, so he, he passed away. Right. Um, uh, you know, we uh, continue to stay involved and in, in all that, and uh, the organization, and uh, time went on, and, and more people started dying. Right. And uh, they finally were able to put a, uh, a name to, to this whole thing, it's called AIDS, and right. uh, I wouldn't have a test. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, must have been 1984, um, just before 
beg your pardon, it was right after I had ran for Empress and um, had won. And uh, I don't know, when, when did you uh, have your test then? And what were the re I was always interested. I went, I went because uh, it took me, it didn't take me long to think about it because I, you know, if something like this is going on, I, I would rather know than not know, mm -hmm. first of all. And I'm glad I did because that, you know, I was able to protect a whole slew of people mm -hmm. from that. Why should I? <laughs> Let me say, not a whole slew of people. Why should I say that? Let me not have to run around. But I, I was able to protect people that I would have had contact with from that moment on. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's when I wouldn't have my, was when I had my test, not necessarily knowing that was going to be the outcome. Right. But, I went because I was having, uh, I, I've always been allergic to pollen and, you know, dust and all kinds of things. And I was having uh, some rashes, and they were talking about, at the time, about red spots on your skin. Right, which they Lesions, they, right. what they call lesions. Carposis. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would be carposis, and I was, like, real scary about that. Right. Like, is this what I have? And so we were going to the Portland Clinic at the time, which was deemed worthless. What, now, what but, is this? What, what, what year was Let's see. It was after I was in Ray. So we've been together almost 10 years. It's, it was hmm, probably oh, about four and a half years ago, almost okay. five years ago. So, um, but the doctor at the Portland Clinic really, you know, because a lot of those doctors didn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a gay disease mm -hmm. and I'm going to stay as far away and make the money, you know, because mm -hmm. they, they make money. Mm -hmm. But uh, he didn't, we were very uncomfortable with him. Mm -hmm. So I got in on the U of O plan mm -hmm. somehow, and I forget exactly how it happened, but I was going to their dental school, mm -hmm. letting them use me as a, as, right. you know, the students use me right. to do things when I needed fillings. And, right. and then I ended up with Dr. Lovis, mm -hmm. uh, Lovis's office mm -hmm. up there at the U of O. Mm -hmm. And I forget exactly how that all transpired, but you know, it's not that easy to do today. You would know. You have, you, you right. have a family doctor, you have a family doctor. Right. But uh, it's nice to have a specialist to right. take care of you, of course. Mm -hmm. And they're all becoming specialists. They're all still learning a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, because, like it is, practicing medicine, that's exactly what it is, practicing. <laughs> you know, um, some people, uh, I don't know, uh, I think... You know, you know, finding out something like that as young as I was at the time that I found out, you know, uh, had a, a tremendous effect on me personally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that my initial reaction was uh, maybe to do things that I wouldn't have never have thought of doing, you know, had I not known or had the information and not had somebody to counsel me through that. There was no counseling. I mean, right. you know, you didn't talk to anybody. I didn't tell a single person. I think, I don't remember when I told you. I hope you didn't get sick. Yeah. I don't think, I don't remember when I told, when I even told you. I don't know. Um, but uh, what, how did that change you, or did it change you uh, when, when you found out that you were, that you were HIV positive? It took time to change me. Because um, <clears throat> I didn't want to change. Right. You know, we are all, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be out doing my thing as usual. You know, it's, uh, a lot of people did, you know, that weren't sick, because I wasn't sick, I didn't feel sick, mm -hmm. I, you know, it just wasn't there. So I just go out and party, and not until I, you know, found out that I had started modifying things like drinking. Yes, you did do that like a fish, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> and fuck like rabbits, and pardon me, excuse me. You know, you end up modifying. You end up changing. Mm -hmm. Having you know, to change. Some things aren't as, as important to you, sex being one of them. Right. <laughs> right. You know, it's not the end of the world. Although right. it's always been my favorite thing in life. <laughs> 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 but uh, we change. Mm -hmm. You're uh, the uh, you uh, were when you ran for empress. Mm -hmm. um, you you had known by that point in time. No. No. You did not know. Mm -mm. Okay. I learned it four and a half years ago. Ah, four and a half years ago. Okay. So, and I've been, what, Empress 27, what was that, 87, 80. I well, I, that, I don't know. Well, it's my 10 years. So how many you came, um, 
you can, tw if it's 29, yeah. so that was three years, so about seven years, so you learned about two years later. Right. After, you, after you're Right. Infant. And when you travel, you know, when you're right. in, you just do all kinds of stuff. Right. So that activity really, um, uh, you know, uh, brought you in contact with a lot more people mm -hmm. in a lot of different cities that were dealing with the same thing. So you were able to, what, um, I don't know. Do I, the only city I felt threatened by is <coughs> when we traveled, and I went everywhere, mm -hmm. Hawaii, Denver, I was in Denver twice. Mm -hmm. The only city that I really consciously thought about it was San Francisco. Exactly, exactly. I was going to say the exact same thing. I, I think the re why, why was that interesting? Yeah. And because it started there and there were so many people. Exactly. That uh, it was effective. Exactly. And so I would make sure that I didn't screw around with anybody from San Francisco. <laughs> right. For one, if I was going to do anything. But I did, not with somebody from San Francisco. He was from Alaska and I thought, well, pretty far away. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so, but that was the only thing I did, I think. One, you know, one question some people, you know, like to ask you is, do you have any idea uh, who, who, how you could have, uh, no. Does no. it ever, does it, does it, does it, have you ever thought about it? No, because there were just too many times it could have happened, you know, at any time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I traveled mm -hmm. during my years of, <laughs> We didn't. We did not buy a house during my year because I was traveling right. so much. We could have bought a house. Right. Exactly. You know, I was in Spokane, Seattle, right. Tacoma, Denver. San Francisco, Denver, Hawaii, Alaska, Los Angeles, Alaska, Los Angeles. You know. Right. So you know, you just can't <clears throat> pinpoint it. Mm -hmm. And it could have happened right here, of course. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you just never know. And I don't even think I don't think about it because I figured I'd never, you know. Like most people, I think. Some people, some people who are so-called celibate or whatnot, think they know who gave it to them or you know something like that. But I don't believe in that. And what difference does it make? And what difference does it make? Exactly. You're in the boat now. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> the card has been drawn. Yeah. So and then uh, the the uh, how has uh, how has uh, you know now some people you know like your the disease now has. Uh, visibly taking an effect, mm -hmm. and there are times uh, when people see you and, and you look uh, less healthy or you don't look as, you know, right. and uh, how does that uh, affect you? And does that, does that, uh, does that affect uh, decisions that you make as far as, you know, what you, I know you only do things that you can feel up to doing, but, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's a day-to-day -day thing because you know most of the things I've been to the hospital for are things that side effects from medicines right because of the toxins and right. all this crap but you know since I've been going I mean there's just so many things that I've come up with that I've never had I'm now diabetic right anemic right <laughs> uh, a few other things but it's all been the medicines, mm -hmm. and not because I just got sick, you know, and this has been going on for about a little over a year now. Mm -hmm. So there were, there, were, there were three years or whatever right. that I was, uh, would just go out and do my thing, you know, do shows every weekend right. and party and drink. Right, right. You know, so Live that, your life like you were used to. Right. <laughs> and now I, I don't drink, I have, I don't drink it's I've stopped drinking now, mm -hmm. but I had altered a little at a time. I had modified my drinking habits. The, uh, uh, the, the, one of the things that I found that was really interesting is you, did, you started uh, taking AZT and DDI and D, what, DDC, I guess the other mm -hmm. one. You, you started taking those things. Did you take that stuff in massive quantities? I mean, did you take, I mean, did you take it every single day, four or five uh, times a day, or how was it prescribed to you? I took, let's see, it was so many pills a day, twice a day, I mm -hmm. think. And then they change it to three times a day, you know. Now you no longer take that. No. Right. It's according to what, whatever regimen they were coming up with. And then at one time, uh, not too long ago, they were having you take AZT and the other one. Right. Because it would stop combating, the AZT would stop combating whatever the disease. Was right. And then the other one was like, a helper, so they fool each other. Right. It's the way I was explained, or whatever you want to call it. And 
level out somehow your white cells and your red cells and whatnot. Do you, do you think that uh, that possibly that drug in itself may have uh, facilitated speeding up what has happened to you? Most, most my doctor, you know, I talk, they, 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 I have refused all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it mostly, well, I took it for about a month and my skin started cracking and my, I just, I did not feel it, so I just told them I don't want it. You know, the differences between how this, you know, uh, disease is like, right. grab some people and run away and other people, mm -hmm. you know, I, I personally think that I was on a mission to kill myself <laughs> after I found out. I mean, you know, I and I'm, you know, I'm standing here, you know, but I'm sitting here now, um, basically only of have, having had, you know, I'm not symptomatic. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I guess there, I always ask myself the question, if anybody should have been dead a long time ago, I should have been pushing up daisies. is the way I kind of feel about yeah, it. Yeah, that's the way I feel. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I'm still sitting here today, and I don't have, uh, you know, any of the, the physical problems mm -hmm. that you've gone through, but most of which have been because of medication right. you take it. Right. And I question that, or have been questioning that. But since I'm under the auspices of the best doctor, I mean the head guy, right. you know, and he just told me the other day that my case was the most complicated case he has out of 300 and some people. Right. And so I'm sort of being a guinea pig, I, I suspect, <laughs> right. but not to die or anything, but just so that they know what's going on. Because I know a lot of people that don't take their medicine just because of the reasons you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know. So I just take them and deal with it and find out answers why. We don't wait until the last minute around here. Right, yeah, exactly. If something's going wrong, I'm at the hospital. Right, exactly. You know, and it's a problem for some people because of insurances. I mean, there's just all kinds of problems why people don't. Right. You know, it's very expensive. The right. medicine is really right. ridiculously expensive. Right. I had one prescription that was $400. You know, and thank God I have some kind of insurance. Right, <laughs> exactly. And before I got it. Right. Because people can't get insurance now also. Yeah, so it's a big problem. Right. Did, uh, how has uh, this whole thing, Do you, how does the whole thing, do you feel like people maybe have like changed in the way uh, that they uh, they deal with you? Or have you, do you feel, or do you notice any differences in the way? Or do you find people more apologetic and, you know, no, and I don't want them to be. I don't exactly. like that. I don't like the sympathy uh, stuff at all. That's why when I first went, ended up in the hospital one time, I didn't want anybody to know, except that that doesn't do a hell of a lot for the rumors that start spreading around exactly. town. And right. I wrote a letter in our paper. I remember. Addressing the issue, like uh, somebody wrote me a letter, an anonymous letter, saying that they thought I owed the community an explanation of what was going on with my I life. Remember. Right. And I thought, I am accessible. Why can't you come and ask me about what's going on with my life? I don't need to. Well, I, that, that's interesting you brought that. I thought about it. I flashed on that before you mentioned the point about the letter that went to the paper, to your paper, The Alternative Connection. Did, did, uh, did you feel like, uh, did, you, uh, did you realize that you were that public of a person that people felt like you owed them an explanation? I felt I was that public of a person, but I was shocked that somebody had the nerves to to, to, to write a letter and have it printed to ask And you. not sign it. And not, well, that means they have no balls at all. You know, <laughs> but, you know, so I did answer, but I didn't give an answer of yes or no. I now, why answer. was that? That's my question. Because I'm a public person. I'm always out. I'm seen. I'm accessible. I figured if you want to know You didn't feel like that was a, you didn't feel like the fact that, that, that you were HIV positive at the time was, everybody's business in general, but if you really needed to know, you could have come and asked me right. that was your response. Right, that's my view on the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody, it's hard enough being in a predicament like this. If you can't talk to the person that is, you know, why bother talking? Right. You know, because it just turns into gossip, and every story is a little bit different. Something gets added to it. You know, I was, I had this supposedly friend, one of the queens, who was standing in a bar, and uh, it was when Bobby Calicate was up at the U of O. Mm -hmm. I ended up there at the same time, and... Uh, and I showed you after. <laughs> there, really. So we, we, just, uh, we were there, and uh, this person was in the bar, their voice carries anyway, and they said, 
oh, if she's in that ward, she'll never come out alive, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a public place. Mm -hmm. So I figured... Do you think that, that not, that's an insensitive thing to say? It's an insensitive thing to say, and people don't think a lot of times, especially if they're not in the predicament. And some of them are in the predicament, and they just say things out of right to turn kind of, anyway. What to uh, to make them to move, uh, feel good? Right to, to move to, to move the, it away from them. Exactly. The, the, the right. Exactly. Did uh, do you also uh, the uh, now some I, you know some now like the illness has uh, the disease is taking on you know there was a period of time where you had lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. You looked extremely frail. Um, you uh, uh, had. Uh, you had this, you know, you had a tr tremendous time of holding trouble. things, trembles, and, and th things like that. And uh, you know, to some people, it may appear to be, it may appear to look like, you know, you you weren't going to be with us much longer. Some people would have, and some people would have like shut themselves off and slammed the door, turned, changed their phone number, and you know, and left it at that. Right. But you know, you came out of the hospital to do Peacock in the Park, which is. I was out of the hospital for about a week. <laughs> and, uh, and, and when I saw died. you in the hospital, you know, because I came and saw you, mm -hmm. um, I had real questions as to whether or not you should try to do that. And you did it anyway, which amazed me. Really? Yes, it amazed me. It really did. Because I, 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 I always, I'm selfish. I'm not, you know, I think that, you know, you, I, we have known each other all of our adult lives. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I thought that that was a sacrifice too great to try to make. Well, you know, I had the, in the day prior to, I got out of the hospital the day before I did that. Right. And I was having this float built, and I didn't, certainly didn't want to disappoint people who were working on it mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And I also, for the people who like to live in a rumor mill, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted them to know mm -hmm. I wasn't dead. <laughs> And I thought I sit on my float day. like Queen V, honey, and wave like I do every year. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I hate to be underestimated, and I hate to be gossiped about. You want to know something, come, you mm -hmm. know, and talk to me, and that's my whole thing mm -hmm. on that issue. So I gave myself that week to get ready for Peacock in the Park, hoping that I could gain a little bit more weight, mm -hmm. which I did well, mm -hmm. you know, and and it went off. Right, it did. The um, Peacock in the Park is... Uh, um, kind of step away from that issue for a minute, we can come back to it, um, came about as a result of, uh, well, something happened, your mother. Well, the first year I did it, I did it for the kids so that people from the city could be involved in the shows and because they can't go to the bars. Right. That so was they the can original see, idea. Right. So they can see the drag shows, see the old queens, whatever they call it, right. you know, and be a part of it instead of... Uh, hanging outside the bars. And now, did you do this originally as a function to do annually after you were empress? Right. Because, like, the Rose Court has, you know, some emperor, right. Rose, like, we did the, the dinner. Right. Uh, Gary and I, have, and they do a dinner every year now for the emperor and empress, mm -hmm. and uh, they give them their rings and whatnot right. at dinner, and so we started that. And uh, you you do this annual thing where the... Uh, it's my empress thing, you know, and my, at the time, unfortunately, my emperor couldn't do it because he was a school teacher. Right. So he was not that involved in it. Right. So, and nobody really believed that I could do it. Uh, they thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to do a drag show in the daytime in the park? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and I was talking about it and talking about it, and Ray, my lover, said, I'm tired of you talking about it. Why don't you go and try to do something about it? And right. I did. Right. And I tied it directly to Gay Pride so they couldn't turn me down. Right. <laughs> and, and the Rose Court. I used both names. Uh, you know, nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. organizations. And then the second year, the year after that, my mother had passed away at my home. Right, ball. now this is a picture here of, uh, of you and uh, your mother. We and that's interesting that this snapshot was taken because this is the last picture that was ever taken of her alive. Yeah. That this is the night of, uh, this is the night of... Uh, my stepping down. Your stepping down. Mm -hmm. And you and her did a, uh, a, no a, a number one did. of the opening numbers. Right, uh, I know him so well. I know Whitney him so Houston well. And her Whitney mother Houston and her mother did. And uh, your mother had never been on stage before to do something like that. No. Nope. She was so happy, excited about doing it, I remember. And uh, shortly, uh, shortly, moments after she left the stage from doing this number, um, she had a heart attack and passed away mm -hmm. um, back there at the ball. Can we talk about that for a second? Um, the, uh, I remember 
you know, that like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I was emceeing that coronation, and uh, I had just after she had left stage, I had walked up to her and I, you know, I said it was, I said it was wonderful, and I asked her, she have a good time, and she said, yeah. And I said, well, go ahead and get, get changed, and I mean, you can go back. Because she was going to be part of the next entrance. Exactly. And so I said, and I'm headed back up front, and I gave her a hug and walked away. And I walked back up to the podium, and the, 30 seconds later, couldn't have been that much time, Misty comes running out, you know, telling me that she needs a doctor. She was in hysterics, and I couldn't figure out what she was talking about. And I said, she said her mother just collapsed, and I said, oh, no, I just left, you know, back there. And uh, you were on stage during this whole time. And uh, then, of course, when I got back there, you know, I had lost it. I'm the wrong person, right. have, you know, in a situation like that. Yeah. I had lost it, and um, they didn't want to tell you that this had happened. Right. Um, they were going to have a meeting downstairs, and uh, they had called an ambulance, and they were going to have a meeting downstairs, and, and they didn't want to tell you this had happened. But the body, her body had to come right by where I it, was getting ready to right. do the act. Yeah. Right. And um, they, they, they were, the, the court, the board members who were back there, they didn't want to tell you. And of course, you know, I'm like about, I wasn't even in the same, same room. And uh, I, I said, you, if you don't tell him, then I'm going to have to walk out there under the safe and, and tell myself his mother just collapsed back here. You know, he has the right to know that, and you don't have the right to, to make that decision for him. I, but I thought it was interesting. Um, what I thought interesting about the whole thing, besides the fact that it all happened, it was just like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. You were able to, again, this composure. I have no idea how you put that together. How, I, how, how you, you stayed? I stayed at the ball because I had, Misty was there and my older sister was there, and I figured there was nothing that I could do of their in drag in a hospital. Right. And my mother would not have me leave exactly. a group of 800, 500 to 800 people, whatever it was, mm -hmm. of a party. You know, because she was an entertainer too, and she gave little parties of her own. <laughs> right. And uh, she would not have me leave my guests. Right. So I stayed. And one of my sisters, ironically, mentioned that because one of my sisters didn't understand. No, she that. did not. And she was really upset she, at me. Just right. And I, at the funeral, I explained it, why I stayed. And she was fine. Mm -hmm. So I think I get that from my mother. She was a very strong mm -hmm. woman in her conviction and everything. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot, you know, by just experience. Mm -hmm. And then after, after your mother, you know, she was really involved in uh, helping. Uh, I know that from time to time she had talked to my mother. <laughs> and they had discussions, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, I really think that some of those conversations, you know, because, you know, not only did she have, uh, you know, you, but she also had uh, Misty, mm -hmm. uh, who used to be a man at Down Sex Change, and uh, then your other sister, Vanessa, who is uh, bisexual, I think. Well, this week. <laughs> and and, uh, the other and I have a gay sister. Another sister's just a lesbian. Right, and she has a son. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so there's a lot of diversity in that room she had to build, that obviously she had to, to contend with. Mm -hmm. And so she obviously would be a, a, an invaluable resource for some people. Right. And when we were growing up, a lot of guys, kids, you know, would come to your house, we yeah, had parties. Everybody was she, my mother. Everybody was, I right. Mean, she was my mother was everybody's mother. Right, because she threw parties. We come there, you go there and get a place to eat. Mm -hmm. You talk to her about anything. Yeah. To make no difference what the subject was. And it wasn't she was, about calling your parents and saying, well, your son. Right. And she, she would call your parents know, and talk to them. Yeah, they needed to be talked to. She would go to the house and have discussions with these people yeah. about their kids. I mean, you know, she would go out of her way to do, you know, whatever you yeah. know, she could do. I mean, it wasn't like she put her phone number in the phone book and you could call her. But, but it was just people it's that personal, we knew. Right. And then, you know, we because we were so much out into the club, we knew people and she would talk to right. them or their parents or anybody, mm -hmm. you know, to help them deal with. I um, mean, she was involved with the she Pete was Flag. The president of Pete Flag for one year. Exactly. And uh, then she also got a chance to, uh, uh, after this situation happened, this, this is the is first the year before. At the first, the first Peacock in the, first the Park, there's Audrey up there. And then the next year, uh, after uh, she passed away, we started the scholarship. You said, you need to do something in your mother's name. I remember you said. Right. You need to do something to carry her name on because she, you know, all these people know her. You're right. You know, all our friends and stuff. And I said, okay, yeah, we can do something. And we already had a scholarship fund going, right. but we thought we'd uh, do it for the youth 
which is not always who applies, but do it for youth and for a, a vocational or hair school or dog grooming school, you know, whatever they wanted to go instead of higher education, because everybody obviously don't go to higher education, mm -hmm. but some do, and we've given out both types of scholarships, mm -hmm. and we're really pleased with that because we're we've done very. How much well. have you? How much has Peacock in the Park raised since roughly since uh, you guys started? Uh, I think it's around the Audrey Edwards Scholarship Fund. Ten thousand dollars. We've done. We've given out almost as much as the Frank and Allison Scholarship Fund, and it's and been, been, around been around for the twenty years. Yeah, um, but uh, obviously <laughs> the we, uh, we operate differently. Though. Exactly. Yeah, set the money aside to make interest or whatever, and we give away what we make right. during the year, and uh, the, the money we make each year we set aside to go out the next year, and we right. give it all out. Right. How, now, the other question would be, um, uh, have you given much thought to, obviously, you know, we all like to be here forever, and uh, certainly what happened to Cedric, uh, your former right. roommate, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, my, and our friend David Evans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, with the quickness by which we can all come and go in this situation. Have you given much thought to about Peacock in the Park? Once Peacock, once there's no Peacock to throw up in the park up there anymore or whatever? <laughs> I mean, you know, the idea obviously needs to be one that needs to continue. Right. What, do you, what do you see happening with that? I see the show going on by responsible people in the community that have worked with me to put it, to get it where it's got, mm -hmm. to get it where we... But you're the draw. There'll be other draws, mm -hmm. I hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people that I'm looking, certainly looking forward to taking, not taking my place, but no, we can do tickets to right. carry on right. what, the commitment. you know, the commitment. You know, there's young people in that can do it. You know, there's Poison Waters, mm -hmm. there's Pepper, mm -hmm. and all these people. Mm -hmm. They're out there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Maria, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sort of I'm letting people you know, I stopped volunteering for so much because I never used to say no to anything. Exactly. I, every show you did, <laughs> I said, okay, let's do it, let's do it. Right. Never said that's part of my popularity. Uh -huh. <laughs> P-Guy's done everything, and right. she would do everything if you just asked her. Uh -huh. So, um, there's a lot of people out there now, or a few, that I really believe in that are going to be around for a while, you know, mm -hmm. as far as I know, mm -hmm. that will pull it off. I don't think they're going to change the name unless they have balls or something. No. Come down here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, you, you, I think that, that that definitely is a, one of the, um, if, if nothing else, it, it would stand as a monument to uh, to all that you've done, the fact that uh, that it's gotten so big. Right. Some people thought that this was not going to happen this year. There were rumors, rumors even going around about, you know, I must I'd be dead or something because it wasn't going to happen. And it happened just like I plan on it happening next First time year. it ever rained, really. This is the first time it ever rained. Mm -hmm. It didn't really piss me off, but I was not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially all the efforts you made to get there. For Thank you, and I got those birds. Exactly. I was in the hospital the week before on the phone trying to find doves, actually. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I had my little, because they weren't feeding me, they had me on a liquid diet, and That's I had right, my little. Know table looking like a desk yeah. and I'm calling around and calling around and there was only four numbers in the book of magicians so that's where I started and they told me that I had to I'd probably be better with pigeons and they wouldn't have to pay for it <laughs> let them fly away <laughs> well they're homing pigeons right. they go back to where they came from and so we got managed to get 19 pigeons and get that effect and then the bird that crawled up on my shoulder which was not planned a lot of people thought it was planned but it just happened mm -hmm. And then he proceeded to poop. <laughs> <laughs> but that was all right. I, was, I had my arms out going, what do I do? You do I'd rather you know do poop, poop on my costume than take a bite out of my ear. <laughs> but it was very effective. You know, that whole little entrance I put together. Mm -hmm. And we had dancers after that. And each time I peeled something off, I had the costume shop makeup. Mm -hmm. wonderful costume that from a poster from Mardi Gras from last year that we had gone to and it turned out beautiful. Mm -hmm. So each time I would do something I'd be in a different layer of right. you know, costuming. Right. 
the uh, and everybody that's what everybody remembers those birds <laughs> <laughs> most people do remember like, what else that day? <laughs> <laughs> most people do remember you that's usually what they'll remember uh -huh. some insignificant like that yeah <laughs> that's the fact you're there yeah all it took to get you there but that's it the um uh we, i touched on a person a minute ago and that was cedric um, mm -hmm. uh, cedric's last name was uh williams williams and uh he was uh, he, he was Empress in Alaska when I was Empress here in Portland. Right. And he moved here to Portland. Because of me. <laughs> because of me. I said, so, uh, when are you going to move to Portland? Do you like it? You know, he visited. And I was supposed to go to his ball at the time. I think, oh, the ticket got out of price. It, it went beyond what I could afford to right. do. And uh, I didn't end up going. But he came to Portland. And I asked him if he liked it. And he liked it. So I said, well, we're going to be buying a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. We're going to be buying a house, so we're looking for one right now, and I'll just get you know one with extra room in it so that you can live here. And uh, we lived in the apartment by Lloyd Center for a, a while, uh -huh. and then we moved into this house. Mm -hmm. I've been here five and a half years. So. Mm -hmm. No, it's been six six years this summer, I think. Okay. Either five or six. Okay. Now you and Ray, this is Ray back here. Um, you and now this is a quite a little picture. Uh, this has definitely obviously been airbrushed. Oh, well, I don't think so. <laughs> it's lighting, been, maybe. It's been shot through a mattress with, <laughs> with God a on the Broadway photo. <laughs> and you and Ray, um, you guys have been together, Ray Stafford has been together for almost It'll 10 be years. 10 years next month, 6 October. Really? Now, uh, that's interesting. You, I don't know, you know, stuff has always got me. And I, we'll bring it up now since we got it on camera. I will <laughs> never forget. My very first experience meeting your husband, Mr. Stafford. Do you recall? At Denny's? No. No, no. This was uh, uh, the night of the coronation when I was crowned emperor. Oh. Weren't, my good friend, weren't you in the hallway? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the serious scenario. They come back and they, uh, they, they, uh, they come back and they tell me that I win. What? I mean, I, first of all, I couldn't believe that I'd won. You ran against Dora. I ran against four or five people. But here I was, you know, I was um, down in the chicken coop. That's you know, yeah. <laughs> that's what they considered. Because I was, you know, I wasn't part of the the, uh, like the, the clinic or the mainstream people that usually run for this kind of stuff. And I'm down at, uh, I spent the majority of my time down at uh, the, the City Night Club, which had just opened up mm -hmm. over on uh, Northwest or uh, Southwest 13th. And um, uh, and I, the other times, I, the other time I spent my time at the lesbian bar. With mm -hmm. lesbians, because some of those little girls were my friends, I used to go there. Party. Plus, I used to DJ over there as well. Right. So I was kind of out of the man. So I really, um, I ran more because at the time I thought it was a fun thing to do. I had just been this Oregon. I followed champagne all around town, mm -hmm. and uh, so I decided to run for this and uh, got involved with that. And I'm coming. They, I was totally shocked that I won. They're taking me out this hallway of the Hilton Hotel, down this hallway to get into the ballroom. And the first person I ran into was your husband with the cocktail in his hand. He was bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and there wasn't a, 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 a word that began with a B and ended end with an exclamation point, an F U word with an exclamation point. <laughs> and about six, I, I, <laughs> I, I, but you were standing there. Was I? Yes. I yes, you were standing there. And I thought, <laughs> at first of all, I thought, how could you let him say this to me? And I, I hate, I'll what tell you he, he was calling you names and telling you, oh. he was supporting Dora, right? Yeah. The bar was supporting yeah. Dora. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I don't, if, if there was any moment in my entire life where I really thought that you could have stepped in and did something to me, <laughs> it was that moment. Because no. Here I was, in sh first of all, I was shocked. Yeah. And also, but you don't remember, so you can't tell me why you didn't. I've always wanted to ask you why you didn't step in and step in and uh, uh, slap him in the face and stuff. Because you guys are just recently married, I, I imagine, yeah. at that point in time. You just got married. Raymond, if you know him, and you know him now. Yes. Yeah. He's a very stubborn person. Yes. Yeah. And then when he's had a cocktail or two. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's not something that you do. I don't care who you are. I can just, I can control him yeah. at yeah. you know certain points. If I, I mean, because I have a temper, but. Apparently at the time I was just happy that you had won. Yeah. I was happy. <laughs> he, on the other hand, was a different story because he was supporting the other candidate. Right, right. That, and well, that caused friction in your household? <laughs> you know, that if you don't let it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only you know, I, I was, that, that's another one of those times that 
I tell you, life goes on. Uh -huh. You know, I stay calm. Right. I don't let anything stress me out. Exactly. exactly. Food and my husband. Exactly. <laughs> and you have plenty of reason to be stressed out. Right. But anyway, I, I, we um, uh, had to. Uh, so that was that. There was one disappointing moment in the in the entire affair. That would have been the moment, as far as I was concerned, that you didn't step up. I knew you'd get over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. It took me a while, but and I did. And then he was on the board, your board of directors. Exactly. And became friends. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and and later on, well, I had to. He was your 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 other half. Yes. <laughs>